The Kalish warlord General Grievous was a fierce warrior, feared by the Jedi for his lightsaber abilities and hatred for their order. This hatred was such that Grievous liked to collect the lightsabers of his victims, regarding them as trophies, which included those of Jedi Council members Master Koth and Shaq T. However, Grievous' most prized lightsabers were attained at the Battle of Coruscant in the form of the Jedi Knight Anakin Skywalker and Jedi Master Obi-Wan Kenobi. Although not obtained through combat, Grievous regarded them as fine additions to his collection. But what if he had failed to obtain these fine additions? How would this change Star Wars history? As you are about to see, a lot changes. Aboard the bridge of Grievous' flagship The Invisible Hand, the two Jedi of Obi-Wan Kenobi and Anakin Skywalker, as well as Chancellor Palpatine, are brought to the custody of Grievous. Standing in front of the towering Grievous, a double OM command battle droid emerges from behind them, carrying the Jedi's lightsabers. Seeing the lightsabers, Anakin uses the Force, and just before the droid is able to hand over the lightsabers, decapitates the droid with his lightsaber and grazes the chest of Grievous, summoning his own blade with his outstretched hand. Before the cyborg could react, Obi-Wan uses the Force to manoeuvre his own blade and accurately stabs the cyborg's heart. Chaos ensues, as Grievous' skeleton combusts, throwing bone fragments in all directions and shattering the windows of the bridge. Anakin and Obi-Wan block these by forming a shield with the Force after breaking their binds, and take care of the remaining droids. Whilst the double OM battle droids provide little resistance, the Magna Guards prove to be more difficult, the delay causing the ship to fall after hits from a Jedi Star Cruiser. Eventually, the Jedi take care of the droids and arrive on Coruscant with a happy landing. After a quick reunion with Padme, Anakin and Obi-Wan meet with the Jedi Council, which is where events start to turn. Rather cleverly, Obi-Wan puts a lot of praise on Anakin for the fall of Grievous, stating he could not have been killed were it not for Anakin's quick instincts. Master Windu is impressed by Anakin's role, and tells him that the rank of Master would be awarded to him when the war ended. With a bow of appreciation to the Council and his Master, Anakin heads back to Padme's apartment. He had been astonished by the words of Master Windu, who he did not normally like. Perhaps the Council were finally appreciating his talents. Later that night, Anakin does not have visions of Padme dying in childbirth, rather a peaceful vision, spending time with his children. Nevertheless, he knew something had been probing at his mind. The following day, Anakin awoke with a spring in his step. He still couldn't believe Master Windu recommended him for the role of a Jedi Master, so it was a delighted Anakin that made his way to Chancellor Palpatine's office. Palpatine is also pleased to see Anakin, and asks him to be his personal representative on the Jedi Council, and to be the eyes and ears of the Republic. Anakin is conflicted by this request. Although he is very much honoured by the Chancellor's offer, he knows that the rank of Master is just around the corner. He would need a lot more time to think about this decision. Promising his mentor they would deliver his answer as soon as possible, Anakin heads back out of the office into the Jedi Temple. But if he had just watched behind him, he would have seen the scowl on Palpatine's face. Meeting with Obi-Wan, he recounts what the Chancellor told him. The intrigued Obi-Wan tells Anakin to join him, and head to the Council Chambers. Again, recalling the Chancellor's request, Windu and Yoda visibly worried. They had been suspecting the Senate's influence becoming more prominent over the past months, and this was another example. The Council and in particular Obi-Wan tell Anakin to be patient, but also wary of the Chancellor. His agenda against the Jedi Council is becoming stronger. Exiting the room, Anakin was more confused than he had ever been, conflicted between his loyalties to Palpatine and the Jedi. He was broken out of his reverie by Obi-Wan, who asks him to head over to the missions room, due to an incoming transmission from Ahsoka. Oddly for the Jedi, Maul had vanished, leaving his recruits to suffer. There had, however, been reports of a silver starship leaving the planet. Obi-Wan strokes his beard in deep thought. The last time he had seen Maul in such a ship was on Tatooine all those years ago. He thought the ship had been destroyed on Naboo, but now it seemed, it had returned. Sprinting outside, Obi-Wan's worst fears are confirmed. Above the skies of Coruscant were dozens of large starships, headed by Maul. Out of the corner of his eye, he spots a hooded figure with his arm outstretched, appearing to manipulate every move. Obi-Wan could only watch in horror, as he had never seen such control of the Force before, except for perhaps Grandmaster Yoda. This must be the Sith Lord they have been looking for. Sprinting back to the Council Chambers, he is stopped in his tracks by a scream in the Force. The sound of death echoed through the walls of the temple, as dozens of clones descended and pointed their blasters at Jedi. As he joins the battle, he notices that Anakin was not with them. 
asking Master Windu. He tells him that Anakin had ventured to the temple library to provide defences there. Hurrying over, he sees the dying bodies of dozens of knights, and moving closer, they plead with him to go to the Chancellor's office with their dying breaths. Taking a moment to compose himself, Obi-Wan heads back to the Council Chambers, and summons Master Windu to assist him, while Sindra Alec defended the temple. Navigating their way through waves of clones, they find a path to the Chancellor's office. Inside, Obi-Wan's eyes widen, as he sees Anakin captured in a force field, and unconscious. Rushing to untie him, he realises that he can only be remotely deactivated. Master Windu also attempts to use Shatterpoint, but it fails to work on such a surface. Suddenly, they hear the sound of several lightsabers igniting, as looking up, they see Darth Maul and Palpatine, whom they now realise is the Dark Claw they have been looking for. Obi-Wan smirked to Maul seeing a warrior become. Merely a toy for Sidious's grand plan. He had thought Maul had managed to wrestle his way out of Sidious's control by taking over Mandalore, but he had been mistaken. Before Sidious could make a move to eliminate Obi-Wan, Maul recklessly tackled the Sorosu Master for what would be their final battle. Allowing Master Windu some space to duel Sidious, Obi-Wan searched for the remote to deactivate Anakin's force field whilst fighting Maul. Although Maul was sizzling with hatred, Obi-Wan used this to his advantage, easily dodging the Zabrak's wayward Juyo strikes. Then adopting an Ataru stance, Obi-Wan baits Maul into a horizontal strike, which he cuts through to slash his torso, this time vertically. Seeing the fall of Maul, Sidious's rage reaches its boiling point, unleashing force signing in all directions, as the Jedi try to dodge and block this tower of power. After defeating the Zabrak on Mandalore, Sidious had expected Maul to be a useful tool, but seeing his body on the floor, he knew he had been mistaken. Meanwhile, Obi-Wan is rolling across the floor, and senses that the force field has now been broken by the force lightning, and then tied Anakin with his lightsaber, shielding his body from the attacks. Obi-Wan channels some of his force energy into Anakin, and Anakin wakes up, but his eyes now yellow. Sidious cackles, as he noticed that his experiment to turn Anakin to the dark side had been successful. But if he had been looking at the bearded Jedi Master, Obi-Wan was smiling as well. Although Anakin's eyes were those of a Sith, their force bond remained. Sidious, now drunk on his own confidence, beckons Anakin to step closer and take his place by his side. Anakin takes one step forward and is now face to face with Palpatine, but behind his back, he summons Obi-Wan's blade and thrusts it into the Sith Lord. As Sidious's body decomposes into nothing, Anakin hands Obi-Wan his lightsaber and asks him what took him so long. Master Windu rolls his eyes in dismay, as he wondered how he would be able to put up with these two during council meetings. That was assuming, of course, that the order was still intact. But given Anakin had proven he was the chosen one, it was something the Karoon Master would need to put up with. That is it for what if General Grievous didn't add fine additions to his collection. Please like this video and subscribe for more tiffs. And as always, leave a comment on what if you'd like to see next. Thank you very much for watching, and see you next time.